Hello friends, welcome to my channel. I always liked watching robot videos. There's something fascinating in these smooth and at the same time fast and precise movements. And watching these videos I always wondered, how did they manage to do this? To achieve such level of precision, all robots hardware and software components must be perfectly coordinated. This makes robotic development quite a challenging task, because you not only have to assemble together a bunch of gears, motors, electronic boards, wires that constitute robot's body and brain, but you also have to make it work together as a whole. Let's consider what it takes to make a robot. Robot is a very complicated system that can consist of many hardware and software components, such as actuators, drivers, sensors. Besides, you would need some communication framework that supports different protocols, algorithms for perception, navigation, motion planning, decision making, as well as controllers, data logging, error handling. So, building robots from scratch can be quite time-consuming and cumbersome process. ROS or Robot Operating System is an open-source software framework that standardizes and facilitates robotic development. As an operating system, it serves as an intermediary between robots' hardware and software, so that you don't have to write your own drivers. Provides means of communication between different processes via message passing. Provides package management system so that you could easily build and deploy your software. Provides tools for visualization, simulation, analysis and much much more. Pretty all robots nowadays share the same basic characteristics. They have sensors to perceive the world, software to make high level decision and motors and drivers for actuation. ROS provides powerful communication system, allowing all these components to communicate with one another. Each of these complex subsystems can further be broken into small unit processes. Each of these unit processes or nodes is responsible for accomplishing one and relatively specific task in the robot's overall functionality. And all this collection of processes is orchestrated by ROS master node, which serves as a manager among the nodes. ROS master maintains the registry of all active nodes in the system. It then allows all these nodes to discover each other and establish communication. In addition, ROS master holds parameter server, as its name suggests. Parameter server is a place where parameters and configuration data shared among all the nodes can be stored. Nodes can also share data between one another by passing messages over topics. Topic is just the name of the bus on which data is transmitted. For example, encoder node can transmit data on the encoder's topic of type rotation. Another node, say position estimator, can subscribe to this topic because its algorithm need rotation data to update robot's position. It can then publish post data on the position estimate topic. Motion planner node is subscribed on both position estimate topic and camera images topic to produce data of type velocity command on controller topic. This collection of nodes connected by topics is called Publish, Subscribe or PubSub Architecture. Topics are just names of the pipes through which messages are transmitted. Each ROS distribution comes with a great variety of predefined message types that you can use. There are message types for communicating physical quantities, like positions, velocities, accelerations, rotations, durations. Sensor readings like point clouds, laser scans, images, inertial measurements. And of course you can define your own message types. Topics and messages is not the only method of passing information between the nodes. 
sometimes request-response architecture can be more useful. For this type of interaction, ROS provides what is called services. For example, let's imagine that position estimator node needs image data from the camera. To acquire the data, it can subscribe on camera images topic. But having done that, it will then receive data each time new image is taken. Instead, we can define a new service for the camera node, let's call it capture image. The request message could be some custom message, let's call it exposure time. And the response will just be an image message. By issuing request, position estimating node would then receive an image with a given exposure time just when it is needed. Alright, let's play around a little bit with ROS. I'm going to export this 3D model of robotic arm that I'm currently working on as a RDF file. RDF is a unified robot description format which is used currently in industry to describe multi-body system like robotic manipulator arms for example. I will be able then to visualize this model in ROS Visualization Tool RVs. If you are a SolidWalk user like me, you can use SolidWalk to ORDF pl plugin to export your robot models to ORDF file. I won't explain in detail how to use this plugin. There are plenty tutorials on YouTube that you can watch. Enough to say that at the end of the day you will get ready to use uh, ROS package with all necessary file files to visualize your robot in ROS. All right, now I'm on my Linux machine and the first thing I'm going to do is create Katkin workspace. I'll dwell deeper in the concept of Katkin workspaces in later tutorials. For now I'll just say that uh, this is the place where, this is the folder where ROS packages can be built, modified and installed. After creating the workspace, it is necessary to source setup file, then we can cd into source subfolder inside the workspace and from there we can create our first ROS package. Cut can create package is a special command for creating ROS packages. It is followed by the name of the package and optionally list of dependencies. Again, we'll delve deeper into all these concepts in later tutorials. All right, next I can just copy launch meshes and where do we have folders created by the exporter the folder where our newly created package is located that is inside Katkin workspace inside src subfolder now we are ready to test our newly created package for this we should issue ROS launch command followed by the name of the package and followed by the name of the launch file launch file is a special file where you specify in XML format all the nodes which should be started and all the parameters which should be loaded to the parameters server in order that your application worked properly. This is our launch file. Here you can see that we have one parameter that is robot description file. We have three nodes, join state publisher GUI node that will let us interactively move robot joints and also we have robot state publisher node and release node. This is a release visualization tool in ROS. It was started because the release node was specified in the launch file. Robot model is also loaded from the parameter server. We can move robots joints thanks to joints state publisher GUI node which was also specified in the launch file.
To visualize all the nodes currently active and connections between them, we can use Ross utility called RQT graph. This is the so-called compute graph, that is the diagram of all the nodes and the topics and how they are connected. We can also use ROS node list command, which will query ROS master node for all active nodes in the system and print them in the console. As you can see, nodes' names are displayed in the ellipses. Some nodes were automatically launched by the ROS. For instance, for instance ROS out node is responsible for printing log messages to the text file. There is also ROS topic list command, which, as you might have already guessed, will print all active topics. As you can see, there are some topics associated with ROSOUT node that we mentioned before. Initial pose and goal topic allow user to set initial, initial and goal position for the robot, which is needed for localization system. Through clicked point topic, uh, 3D coordinates of any point of the, on the Revive's map could be published. We are not interested in all these topics for now. To get the information on the topics that we are interested in, we can use Rostopic info command followed by the name of the topic. As you can see, this command can tell us who is the publisher and subscriber for this topic and what type of messages are transmitted. If you want to get more info about type of the message, you can use Ross message show command followed by the message type and you will get full message definition. Here you can see that join state message which belongs to sensor messages package basically consists of four arrays, one string array where names of the joins are specified and three 64-bit floating point arrays where position, velocity and effort for each of the joint is specified. ROS topic echo command followed by the name of the topic allows to see actual messages published currently on this topic. And here you have it. New messages are constantly arriving. As you can see, as I change position of any joint, appropriate field in the joint state message is changing too. So, as its name suggests, joint state publisher GUI publishes joint states, which include position, velocity and effort on the appropriate topic. We can then look at TF topic, which is published by Robot State Publisher node. Robot State Publisher is subscribed to Joint States topic. It then uses Robot Description parameter to calculate forward kinematics of the robot. So through TF topic, transformations of co coordinate frames attached to robot links are reported. This information is, the, is then used by RVs to update robot's visualization. As you can see, when I rotate joint 6, orientation of the gripper relative to its parent link, that is link 5, is changing. Alright, today we've discussed some high-level concepts behind the ROS. You got to know how a ROS master process works, how it enables ROS nodes to establish connections between one another and how it serves as parameter server. We've also discussed how nodes can communicate with one another through topics and services. In later tutorials we will continue our dive in the world of ROS and robotic programming. So stay tuned, don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.